If Kiev does receive approval from the West to use Western weapons to strike deep into Russian territory, the armed forces of Ukraine will strike 261 military facilities of the Russian armed forces, such as large weapons depots and permanent deployment points of Russian troops. This was reported by the German magazine Der Spiegel, citing analysts from the Institute for War Research. If Kiev strikes these facilities with Storm Shadow air-launched cruise missiles, their fire damage, according to Western analysts, will significantly complicate Russian military logistics. One of Russia's most important advantages in the conflict is its ability to move troops en masse from safe areas deep within its own territory. If this advantage were to be compromised, it would significantly hinder Russian operations and increase Ukraine's chances of seizing operationally important territory, explained ISW Geo Data Group Director George Barros. Earlier, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Kurt Campbell stated that possible deliveries of long-range Atticom's missiles are being actively discussed by American authorities. At the same time, U.S. State Department Representative Matthew Miller previously emphasized that Kiev does not need Washington's permission for strikes by the Ukrainian armed forces deep into Russia only if they use their weapons on their own territory. In August, the Russian Ministry of Defense demonstrated the operation of the Buk M3 anti-aircraft missile system in the area of a special military operation, which intercepted and destroyed an American Atikms operational tactical missile launched by the Ukrainian armed forces. New NATO Secretary General Mark Ruta visited Ukraine on Thursday in his first official trip since taking office and pledging continued support for Kyiv in its war with Russia. Ruta met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Kyiv as air raid sirens twice went off in the Ukrainian capital. The new head of NATO vowed, when he took office Tuesday, to help shore up Western support for Ukraine which has been fighting Russia's full-scale invasion since February 2022 and has recently been on the defensive due to a relentless Russian army push in eastern regions. Ruta expressed confidence that he can work with whomever is elected president of the United States, the alliance's most powerful member, in November. That could be a key moment for Ukraine's effort to ensure continuing Western support. Zelensky said he discussed with Ruta elements of Ukraine's so-called victory plan, ahead of a NATO meeting at the Ramstein Air Base in Germany next week. The two also discussed the battlefield situation and the specific needs of Ukrainian military units. Zelensky reiterated that Ukraine needs more weapons, including long-range weapons. I love yes? We have not spoken for three months. Thank you so much. So thank you still for the call on my last day. Thank you so much. Okay. You're very welcome. Happy to see you. Good see you. You met After a lull, the topic of sending NATO troops to Ukraine has reappeared in the Western press. Following France, Britain has started talking about it again. As former UK Defence Minister Ben Wallace stated, Britain needs to send its troops to help Kyiv. This is what the Daily Telegraph writes. The former British Defence Minister believes that the West should send its military to Ukraine, but not to participate in combat, but to train Ukrainian soldiers, in particular mobilised ones. According to him, Kyiv needs to expand the criteria for mobilisation 
and recruit as many recruits as possible who will be trained by the West but on Ukrainian territory, which will be much faster and cheaper than transporting them, for example, to the same Great Britain. According to Wallace, the British alone can train 100,000 Ukrainian soldiers to confront the Russian army. The West can train them. Britain alone could train 100 people if it wanted to. We should send our troops to help the Ukrainian army with training and maintenance. Not so that they fight, but so that they can enable the rear echelons to repair the equipment that we have all given them, the former minister stated. He also called on Western countries to increase military aid to Kyiv, thereby helping it defeat Russia. Wallace did not explain how Ukraine would defeat, given the volumes of military equipment and weapons. Recall recently France has not ruled out sending troops to Ukraine, according to Benjamin Haddad, the French Minister for European Affairs. Paris, along with other NATO allies, have trained over 100,000 Ukrainian troops since the war started and in February, French President Emmanuel Macron said there was no consensus on deploying ground troops to Ukraine, but that nothing was excluded. NATO allies have been trying to provide military assistance to Ukraine, but the presence of boots on the ground in any form could raise fears of escalation. However, Moscow has already portrayed its invasion as a proxy war between Russia and the alliance. The French newspaper Le Monde reported in May that France could send instructors to Ukraine to train its military, following a deal agreed by Kyiv's top commander, General Alexander Syrsky. As a debate rages about whether Western weapons should be allowed for strikes deep inside Russia, Haddad reiterated the French president's position regarding Paris's latest stance on military assistance for Ukraine. President Macron has said on several occasions that we must not exclude anything, and that still applies in particular to training missions, Haddad told German newspaper Berliner Zeitung.